October 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapters 125 and 126 from the Old Testament. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. It cannot be upended and will endure forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, now and forevermore. Indeed, the scepter of a wicked king will not settle upon the allotted land of the godly, Otherwise the godly might do what is wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, to the morally upright. As for those who are bent on traveling a sinful path, may the Lord remove them, along with those who behave wickedly. May Israel experience peace. When the Lord restored the well-being of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. At that time we laughed loudly and shouted for joy. At that time the nation said, The Lord has accomplished great things for these people. The Lord did indeed accomplish great things for us. We were happy. O Lord, restore our well-being. Just as the streams in the arid south are replenished, those who shed tears as they plant will shout for joy when they reap the harvest. The one who weeps as he walks along carrying his bag of seed will certainly come in with a shout of joy, carrying his sheaves of grain. God, I was having a, a interesting, just great conversation with one of my friends, and we were talking about our actions, good or bad, reflect to other people their view of Christianity, meaning to other Christians and to non-Christians, how we walk our life as Christians reflects and provides them an opportunity to see what a Christian is. Now, sometimes that's good. You can be a model of good behavior, the fruits of the Spirit. Um, You can model good things, a a good walk, a a healthy relationship with you. Um, And you can be public about that and vocal and share that with other people, glorifying you through that reflection. You can also, to Christians and non-Christians, reflect opposite of that. And sometimes it, it's not even a reflection of something technically bad or sinful. Sometimes we can just simply reflect non-desire. I don't know how else to put it. Um, too often we don't take the time to uh, fully engage in being a Christian. Too often we have surface relationships with each other at church, at our community groups, at our neighborhood groups, at our small groups, at our Bible studies, and we only get down a certain level because getting down deeper than that requires some work, requires some transparency, requires us to open our heart to potential hurt, which we know from the past is probably going to happen again. But if we don't do that, if we aren't transparent to other people in what our walk looks like with you, then I think we do a grave disservice to Christians who need that encouragement and to non-Christians who don't fully see what a walk with you looks like. I'm by default a very, very private person. Um, I would say for the most part, even good friends don't know a lot about me and Um, That is something that I have worked on, and and oddly enough, you've allowed me to work on it through Daily Video Bible. Um, I've become very transparent about my faith, and sharing it with hundreds of thousands of people listening to these videos. And what is incredible is it's not scary, um, as it usually is for me, and you know this, God. Um, It has become less about me and how I feel about it and more about you because my honesty my transparency my being authentic about my walk helps other Christians to be encouraged that it's not all sparkles and roses and wonderfulness that it is a relationship and you do work on it and I think sometimes as Christians we do other dis- other Christians a disservice by making it seem like everything's perfect and so when they struggle with something they feel like they're they're weird or they're odd um, or they're not doing something right I remember being mad at you Uh, I'm sure you remember it too and it's more than one time that I've been mad at you and you and I had these powerful conversations where I was really angry and really hurt and really frustrated with you 
and I was very transparent about that hurt and I actually had a friend who said um I think it's wrong that you are angry at God and I remember that one hurting me but two it also bothered me because I see all these people in the Bible with almost identical words that they used with you um, and you put people in the Bible to show us what does that look like to walk with you it's not always just this easy simple walk uh, that is perfect all the time um, sometimes it's the hard stuff and I think sometimes being transparent about the hard stuff is really good for people to see what that walk looks like now the purpose of my walk is not to be angry at you because my basis of my faith is still there I didn't walk away from you I didn't walk away from my faith obviously um, I was just really frustrated and angry and I was wrong and you and I both knew I was wrong uh, but I had to work through that I had to work through that hard stuff to get in deeper into our relationship not saying that being angry at you is a good idea but it they are real emotions and you know sometimes I think I'm the only one that gets angry at God only me and the people who are in the Bible <laughs> Nobody else gets angry at you because everybody has their Sunday face on. And I, I don't think that that's fair to other Christians. Interestingly, interestingly enough, I also don't think, as Psalm 126 talks about, I don't think it's fair to the nations. That if we are Christians out there doing bad things, obviously that doesn't glorify you. But if we're Christians out there who are hiding our faith, who aren't publicly living and reflecting who you are in our lives, we aren't sharing that with the nations. The nations can't say, as the psalm says, the Lord has accomplished great things for these people. How in the world are people going to see the amazing things you accomplish in my life if I keep it all hidden in my heart? There is absolutely no way they can see that. So by publicly working through a situation and sharing, gosh, you know, I'm really angry at God right now and here's what this looks like. And here's how I'm working through it. And yes, I know that I'm wrong because here's what the Bible says. And then here's what God did. And here's what God did. And here's what God did. Then it shows how you actively work in our lives to solve those situations. You know, having the fruits of the Spirit is crazy awesome. Uh, but we're human beings. And to have the fruits of the Spirit on display 24-7 it is impossible. It's something we strive for, but it's impossible. To me, uh, it's almost a little bit more valuable for people to see us work through the hard stuff, the uncomfortable stuff, the icky stuff in our relationships, because it shows us we're humans. It shows other people we're humans. And more importantly, it shows other people just how wondrous you are in our life, how much you love us, how much you take care of us, how you never leave us and you work through those things with us. Just as the psalm says, the Lord has accomplished great things for these people. God, I want people to know you have accomplished great things for me as you've worked through all the aspects of my life. Not just the happy-go-lucky, wondrous times that everything seemed to be going well and the peaceful times, but how you worked in my life through the hard times and the bad times and the times where I chose to sin. To me, those are much more powerful examples of who you truly are, God. It speaks volumes to who I am too, but more importantly, who you are and the things that you accomplish in people's lives. In your son's name I pray. Amen.